Hey everyone, and welcome to another Gadget Talk. Man, it's been crazy. Of course, there's a lot of stuff we're doing. Star Wars cash still. We're working on the drawer on that. Am I correct on that, Chad? Yeah, I'm working on a drawer and a few other things. Okay, so but some big stuff's going been going on in Star Wars. Of course, this is this week has been celebration. I don't know if you've been following any of that, Chad, but there's been some really cool announcements that. I know I'm excited. I'm, I apologize for my dog barking in the background. Uh, so she's getting a little excited. I think she's about to get fed. But um, so, yeah. But yeah, we got a lot of different stuff for you tonight. We got some announcements. We have a new another clue for one of the keys. Um, and then Chad's going to be showing us how to make to build this cash store. Uh, so we got a lot of different stuff that's coming up uh, that's going to be coming through tonight. Uh, really do appreciate everybody joining us tonight and i was kind of seeing some new names on here um as i was looking at everybody's uh, lost ken I, welcome uh, bill on the move happy easter to you as well uh Missy cupid adi adi olsen's on with us tonight welcome kansas uh, macgyver and flow tricassius welcome tom brotherman christ our king 987 welcome uh rumba cats hey how you doing down in texas uh, df mavis is on with us uh Seabeck tribe Lori c and let's hear David and McDonald, uh, Buzz82, coming in from Savannah, Motorama, um, uh, Brad Bishop, the Pizza Ninja, Darren from Australia, B&J Bish, Reese486, the Pizza, or I just said the Pizza Ninja, Scooby Loves Poo, uh, Shandrum here in Memphis, and Eric uh, Kaminsky is with us as well, coming from India, Indiana. Not India, India, and Joanne. So welcome from Arkansas. So just welcome all those that are joining us live. Uh, if you are listening to us at a later date, hey, sometimes it's live and we will actually comment some stuff on that you're putting in the chat, and the chat room just has a lot of fun. So not everybody's uh, as committed as Darren from Australia. That's right. Uh, Darren, what morning. time is it there? Is it like three in the, in the morning? I don't remember what time it is. I think it's two or three, something like that. Yeah. So uh, but before we get too much further and get into all those announcement, that announcement with the key and all that, uh, we gotta go ahead and take care of our sponsors, and we're gonna do that right now. As soon as I find the video, I found it. Here we go. If you have not become a patron of the Geocache Talk Network, what are you waiting for? Patron levels start as low as a Bison Tube level at three dollars a month. To sign up is easy. Simply go to the Geocache Talk website and click on the Become a Patron button, or go to patreoncom forward slash Geocache Talk. Patrons now get the famous blackout coin, invites to special events, and other really great items throughout the year. Become a patron today. Logwork, the creators of the fantastic logbook made with genuine right in the rain paper, the logbook's designed for the micro containers of the present and future, geared towards the hider who'd rather go caching than doing cash maintenance. Find them at logwork.com. That's L O G W E R K.com. Have you subscribed to FTF Magazine yet? FTF Magazine is the number one geocaching magazine available. It is a quarterly magazine that you can be part of. Submit your geocaching milestones and adventures to be published. FTF Magazine is also interactive with puzzles to solve and the hunt to find Spartacus. If you can solve the puzzle or find Spartacus, then you will be entered in to win a special path tag. Every new subscription, you will receive a special swag pack. Subscribing is easy. Just visit FTF's website, ftfgeo.com. Don't miss out and subscribe today. All right. Welcome. All right. Here we go. So should we go ahead and take care of the key real quick? Uh, yeah. Well, uh, I almost want to make people wait and watch the show a little bit. Okay. Uh, That's fine. But, let's, uh, that. uh, let's see. Yeah. Let's, let's wait a little bit longer. We'll make okay. some people uh, actually watch the show. Well, That's although fine. everybody on here, I think, are pretty much uh, list, a lot of regular are listeners. Regulars. So. Yep, yeah. regular listeners on here. So yeah, and the engaged is just some eye, uh, some eyeballs watching. So yeah, I know. I want to know where it is too. I do too. I'm I'm, I'm clueless on this one. <laughs> so um, yeah. So uh, what are we going over? Oh, drawer, geocache drawer. So um, I decided to think about building a drawer for the Star Wars cache. Uh, and so my thought was, we had several thoughts on making it pop out when you push all the buttons at one time, um, you know, or having a drawer or something happened. And so I was thinking, well, if 
we're going to use the decoding deal here for part of the puzzle. So that'd be kind of fun to have door pop open at the beginning. And then you have to pull this out to the decipher. Yeah. Um, so I was thinking what would be, I was trying to think of ways to build this into the, uh, the cache itself. And one way I thought would be kind of cool is I can, if I do the top of the cache out of acrylic, I can do that, the acrylic hinge on there, make it look really clean. Um, and if I just have a really small thin door pop open and you can pull this out, I thought that would be kind of cool rather than right. a big, a big door coming out. And so what I designed originally, um, I, and this is, this is some of the final cuts. I <laughs> had to recycle lots of filament from 3d printing. Um, here, let's go to the build cam. Yep. Yep. I'll bring it in. So my original drawer was this here, and I was going to have this actually. Um, I was debating whether to have it just pop open a little bit on the side and have it come out, um, or make it like this and have a door pop open. Uh, and that's my original plan. So I built it actually to be able to put in uh, to heat in the uh, nuts, um, and then you'd also build. Then you'd also build a screw it, so you could always take it apart to do maintenance on it. Um, so that might, was my original thought. When I put this in there, though, um, it's going to be hard to get out, um, for me at least, with my fat fingers. And I thought it would be kind of cool um, to actually, when the door opens, if, it, if it's actually lifted up a little bit. Yeah, that um, would be cool. So, I mean, this is a cool design, and it works. And you could actually use this for many different things. Um, but... It's it's not gonna work on this on this case, so this will go in my my drawer of shame uh, <laughs> for future projects. So what I end up going coming out with is this thinner one here that actually, if you notice it, it sticks up, but if you close the door, it will go down. Right. So it has a spring oh, that's, system. That's on cool. It. Yeah. Yeah. So I designed this real fast, and I think. I like this one the most out of all of them, and I actually think I might go a little bit thinner. Well, the springs are what's kind of keeping me, so there's springs in here that's actually allowing it to pop up. So, let's see here. Sorry, I should have had all this ready. No, no worries. So I'm true. looking back here. Uh, <laughs> B and J Bish says the load, uh, spring load, it like a VCR loader slash slot. So that's kind of what that what you're doing right there. It looks kind of cool. Kind of. I mean, it's really really basic. And and honestly, I was thinking a CD-ROM drive drawer, right? Um, right. Like Tricasius uh, has shown us in the past. And I thought that'd be really cool. So what I ended up doing was designing this box here with two little slots on each end there. And then right. uh, some little dowel ends here um, for the spring to actually fit in. And then the same thing on the on this part here. So this has, it's just, this is fits this length in here so it can't go up too far. Um, and it will fit the springs. You just have to mount it in here. Right. Like so, if I can. Um, and then you can kind of see how it it's springy um in there that's so good. once you get it go ahead i'm just gonna say it's just a, really such a simple design and that's what makes it really i think really cool and elegant yeah and, and so i had to do the design to make sure if one end gets pushed too far it can't pop out right right so well when the lid is on it right won't yeah, pop yeah out. it doesn't pop up um it's popping up this way so uh, again, on this one, I just made the hole smaller. I didn't do any of the... I wasn't sure if I was going to use it, so I didn't want to uh, heat in any of the threaded nuts in there. So, um, But once you get this on there and it's screwed in, then it works fairly good. Um, anyways, for that little slot I was wanting. And so when you shut the door, it'll push it down and then... When you open the door, it's sticking up a quarter inch, so you can actually grab it. Uh, I could actually go with some bigger springs and make this slot bigger if I wanted to, to make it right. pop up even more. I didn't want it to come flying out. But this was my first draft of this one, and I kind of really like this. And so 
this will get mounted. I'm actually, I'll have to remodify this here and make a plate around the top of this um, to actually mount to the bottom of the piece of acrylic um, or to the top of it, depending on how I want to end up mounting it. Uh, but I think this will be the final one here. I'll probably make it so it pops up a little bit more. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, that looks really cool. And I know I mean, Tricash is saying neat design. Um, Motorama is saying very cool. Um, Ramakat says a pop open drawer is total class. Now, I know they haven't asked this in here yet, but what are you designing your the, the, the prints in? What are you using? Are you using AutoCAD? What, what AutoCAD? Oh, um, yes. Tinkercad? On this one, I just use Tinkercad. Okay. Tinkercad is super simple to use. Right. Um, we may need to do a show sometime and put this in our notes that kind of showing how you're doing these designs and we'll go. Oh, and yeah. Kind of, kind of do that and design something um, and spend a little bit of time on that. That would be something that people can see and how easy it really is. I've used it a little bit. I've done some stuff. I mean, I've worked around it and I've taught a little bit, but I think it's something that we would be really good for us to kind of dive into a little bit on one of our shows. Absolutely. And if you have a 3d printer, um, I mean, it really changes. It's a game changer and Tiger hat, super simple to use. Um, and, and it really is, it only takes a few minutes to really learn anything and it has a great support. Like most of the programs or anything you have for your 3d printers. If you join a Facebook group, most of them will, That's me, uh, sorry. My chair sweeps. I, I thought something fell over here. Um, <laughs> the uh, um, anyways, there's there's all kinds of help online on Facebook groups to join that. Like I have Prusa printers and Anacubic printers, and so I join those Facebook groups and I always ask any questions I have for the, either the slicers or anything, and they're very helpful. People are always willing to help. So speaking of Prusa printers, real quick, I saw they're starting to send out the big one. Well, so they came out with the MK4 too. That's actually three times faster than the the one I have. Yeah, but I thought you ordered another really big. I one. did order I the big one, but the new the MK4 is coming out first, supposedly. So I ordered the upgrade kit for one of them. So you can upgrade <laughs> yours. Anyway, so one of them, I was debating do I order a whole new printer, but I don't need seven printers. So <laughs> no, six is uh, enough. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, I'm gonna. I just ordered the upgrade kit, but they're not shipping out until June. And the uh, the new one, I don't know when the new big one when I'll get it. I reserved mine the first day they announced it. Right. Um, but I've seen people on the Prusa group with their boxes delivered on their doorstep. So I don't know where I'm falling in there. It could be end of June. Whatever. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, B and J Bish says nobody said need. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I know that's that's the problem. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um yeah it doesn't take much for is, i thought eight is enough it. yeah that's it those that don't get that that's from a show we speak a show called eight is enough yeah i uh, uh it doesn't take much for me to get a new toy so uh <laughs> but if it's faster then that allows me to print a lot more stuff and bigger of yeah. course um doing full-size helmets i mean to me that's being able to do large prints is the big thing right so. Uh, anyway, sorry, <laughs> we, we can go off on it's, printers it's all day long. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, and toys. But uh, anyhow, uh, printing, yes. Yeah. So if you even get in a, what I recommend is if you don't know if you really want a 3D printer, um, th then I would recommend going with what Derek has. Yeah, um, I have an Ender 3 V2 uh, Pro. Pro, yes. Mo the most popular printer in the world, I believe. Um, the number one selling printer and you can upgrade it as you can afford it if you or you know you get it and then you decide oh yeah i'm really gonna get into this you can buy the parts to upgrade it and that's what i recommend getting into i believe um chad has a prusia dave wagner has a prusia and he just got a bamboo um so uh anyways there's there's all kinds of printers out there um you know whatever get what you like I'm sorry, I'm listening. To, I'm reading. Yeah, it's <laughs> funny. It's just kind of uh, Jerry Fur Two has joined us as well. Um, Direwolf says, "I hope uh, Chad's wife doesn't watch the show. She does. It's okay. She sees his shop. It's she's right out the right out behind there. Anyways, uh, yeah. Motorama uh, can't have auto mount or 3D printers. That's just weird. And Quincy Cuba says, "But it's they're cheaper by the dozen." 
Another That's right. Movie reference. So if I can't have odd amounts, then I got to buy two new ones, right? Is that how it works? Uh, yeah, I have. To, I the problem is, is I have a very small house, <laughs> and I run out of room for stuff, and that's my issue. Do you see the comment from Pizza Ninja? The three no. D printers like like a Sith's. They come in pairs. Yes. There's always is that how two. Sith works. Yeah, there always there's always two. There's always yeah, a master and apprentice. I say I learn something new every day. Um, come on, uh, okay. come on. You, don't no, make I, me have to take your Star Wars card away from you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so anyway, that was the drawer system, and I still have to finish it. But then what happens? So I was building that. I thought you know what would be kind of cool is to have a card slot system. Now I've talked about this for a long time to have card slots where you put them in in the correct order, then push a button, and something will pop open. And the reason for the button is momentary switch, so you don't burn up a latch or anything like that and so i designed um on tinkercad of course and this design took me about 10 minutes so that as as you can know i'm there it's very simple to use tinkercad um so what i designed were these little systems here right here in the slots are in different positions um okay and <clears throat> i designed some cards um, to go in them, and, and I've actually designed these twice because the first ones I didn't like, but um, some are longer. So the card itself will slide in here. Oh, if I can get it in the right slot, which one is this one? This one, right? It would go through here, and you'd have a, a momentary switch. But once you get it in there, you can't pull it back out because it's not it's not long enough. So I redesigned it, if I can find the right one, um, a little bit thinner as well, but it sticks out a uh, half inch so you can actually pull it back in and out. And So like four, data cards. Yes, exactly. And I thought I could do these in acrylic, put an LED light right here. So when it's in the right spot, when it pushes the, the momentary switch, it would actually light the card up. Oh, um, that'd be cool. And so I designed it because I have a whole bunch of these switches here these arcade switches um laying around that have the momentary switch on them and you can get these in a normally open normally closed format too like we use so they can cancel each other out um so my thought for this was was to take it and mount it that's why i have this little shelf here Sorry, right pull it up here. is so that i can actually mount it drill holes through it and mount it so it stays in that slot or the Oop, I think that, we might have just lost it over there. there. It pushes on it. Now, <clears throat> I noticed that it actually, um, my thought was maybe a magnet system. And then I thought, well, you could just do read switches and get rid of the whole switch thing. I like the button. I like the button itself. Yeah. Um, so you can do either thing you, any, either way you want. You can either put a read switch here. And actually put a hole here for like a little three mil magnet um, and test that out. But I like the switch thing. So I just got to figure out a good way to to have it. Or maybe I don't do a button and you have to hold them all in at one time to actually activate it. And then when they let go, then it obviously de de -latches the or deactivates the latch. And so that might be a cool way. So they're all uh, made separate differently. So with this tooth, whatever you want to call that ear. Um, so they actually cannot fit, even if you flip it in a different slot. Now, would you just do one? Um, because some of them, no, like do the four. four, like, so like yeah. the two top so, two of them, your, how would you mount your uh, momentary so, switch in there? So it fits in the slot. It would have so to be if you have this, bit. you can put your switch in there, do the next one. So I'd glue this on. The only reason why I don't have it in one piece is because then I would have to have supports in here for filament when you're when you're printing it. Right. It's easy enough to use some glue on it and glue it together, glue it nice and you know shut, and then you can glue the next one on top or put the next one on top. And you can see the switch fits in there. You could wire it and everything. Do the next one. How does the switch fit on that one? The one that you just put on there. Which one? This one? The one that you, yeah. Easy. You just flip it. 
Is it still going to be flush? Okay. Yeah, yeah, because this, it sticks up quite a bit on there. And uh, so anyways, there's room. And this would be your slots. You know what? Let me do this. Let me grab some tape. Yeah, I just love the way that looks. It looks really cool, and I think that would be a really cool f added feature, just one of those extra things of a data card. Mm -hmm. um, as you're adding different things, and it would maybe oh, if each wonderful. one, if you get each one different right, diff it put it in there, it does something different too. That might be something yeah. that might be. So like if you had like LEDs and it lit up like 10 red ones and then or then another one would write four blue ones and different colors and you had to do something with that combination. Um, you could even do sound modules that would act. Sound modules or any of those, anything that you just fire up with that momentary switch. That would just be, I think that would just add something so much uniqueness to the cache itself. I think that would be really cool. Yeah, and if anybody wants these files, email me. I'll share the files with you. Um, it's really not that big of a deal for me. Um, okay, so. so my cache so, says his cache card geocache has done similar to that. And then Engineering 42 says, have you considered an emitter slash receiver photo sensor pair to shine through a notch hole in the card? No, is that just so it knows there's something inserted? I haven't thought about that or considered it, no. Um, so on this, then I would also make a plate that would obviously the glue to this that would sit somewhere. I can even have it recessed back. So the card slots stick out a little bit out of the uh, protrude out of the front, the face. So if this was a face of your cash or whatever, you could have it right. protrude out if you want anything like that. Then you take your cards and I'm going to cheat. See if it even works. Yes. Okay. And then once you had them all in. And especially if you had to push on them to get them to activate. <laughs> um, there we go. If you had the momentary switch on them and you had to push on them all to make them activate um, a, a latch, then once you let go, they would de deactivate the latch. But you can kind of see how they're all protruding through there. Um, it looks like I printed two of the same for one of them. I know I have several different designs. I think I did five different. But they're, it's very simple to change. Yeah. Um, but and you can do How as many did it as take you to print you those? Um, I know you can go back and look on the program. So yeah, I was just gonna say I'll have to look on my program. Uh, the cards themselves was like two hours. There's almost no infill, like ten percent infill. Okay. Uh, uh, on this, um, but so because there's nothing really to it. Um, in fact, if you hold it, I don't know if you can see. No, the light's not bright enough. Um. You can actually see that there's not much inside of that. Um, these here probably took about six hours. And that's because I did it on my Cobra Max. Um, I think it took six hours for the bottoms and the tops. So four bottoms and four tops. So if okay. I wanted to, you could just put, you can print one each on each on a printer, a different printer, and you could go faster. But yeah. Um, depends on how many printers you have and the yeah. type of printers because different printers do print at different speeds. Yeah. So you can see on this original cards, which I, they're offset these, these little things here. So, um, anyway, just kind of a fun thought to make that push them in. It opens a door or a drawer or anything you, you want to do. You can make it light up with different colors. If you just wanted it really literally to light up a color for a code. So, if green means five or whatever, you know, to, to get a combination code, um, then you can just have it light up green or, or something. So there's all different options. Like I said, I can laser cut these with a, curl, a, a clear acrylic and put an LED in the back as well. So then the card itself lights up and that'd be a pretty cool feature. Yeah. Well, I was just thinking you could either, the acrylic would probably be a lot easier than even resin printing them. So well, no, I actually resin printing them. I considered resin printing them, but I only have green and clear resin. All right. I think, but resin printing would turn out really good. Um, I have one I did here, not a card. I know that would be another option. Um, 
just those that don't have, they may have a resin printer, but they don't have a, um, a laser cutter or to be able to get that fine cut and onto the acrylic. Yes. So if you have a resin printer, um, you can see here, it comes out really clear. The, the resin does. Um, I have clear and green. I know that now because I did the screen canister. Um, and that is actually easier to show. So, yeah, that, see, the, as a resin printer. So this comes out very clear, just like this one. This is resin as well. Um, very clear, very shiny, and it would light up. So um, I have both clear and I have green. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I considered resin printing it, but then I got to buy your resin. And if you have a resin printer, um, it just is a lot more work to resin print than regular than filament print. So, anyway. Yeah, I'm looking back through here. Uh, Motorama says that I made a cash out of an ATM that uses debit card type cards in a similar way, but does not, but not as slick as that. Uh, B and J Bish says once these cards activate with their switches, it could light up a photo box hologram and play an audio like Obi Wan Kenobi. You, you fought with my father in the Clone Wars, or something. Yeah, that's that's really cool. Yeah, you, do, you could do a whole bunch of different stuff like that. Um, are really cool. Um, Try Cash says, I still want to play Stump Chad Shop. Does does he does he have it? So I'm sure you could stump me really easy. We could play it sometime, but I'm sure you could stump me. He's been here. He knows what I have. Yeah. So, but uh um, I I like like you said, the, because the resin printing can be very difficult. Um okay, so do you have a flex capacitor? I do. <laughs> Um, hang on, though. I don't know where it is because I used it a long time ago. I showed it on the show once. Sorry, Pizza Ninja. Um, um, <laughs> one I built. So um, there's probably one in the shop. Um, I showed it on one of our first episodes because I was going to use it in a cache. It's in a I actually was thinking about that the other day going, I need to find that thing again. It's, I also have stuff up in storage up above as well so if we're gonna do that i need to <laughs> have a way up there so seabisic tribe says that would be a fun uh patreon event and that that would be and so there's we're trying to come up with different ideas for our patrons uh to do from different things so that would be a really fun event for a patron i think yeah i'll look for that flux capacitor for the next show so, because I just lost. <laughs> well, I haven't found it yet, but I do have one somewhere. It's not like a full in the case one. It's LEDs. In fact, it, uh, I used to have it behind me on the shelf at one point in our shows. But anyways, <laughs> um, so that's where I went with the cards, um, and I get side sidetracked by stuff all the time where. I start Don't thinking, about, oh, I want to do this, and then I start building something different. So yeah, I always will... those rabbit trails and those squirrels. Yeah, oh, it's not hard for me. Um, so for back to the Star Wars cache, um, especially if you watch, <laughs> watch my Instagram, um, I post stuff all the time on there. And um, anyways, I wanted to have build plates for the the cache, okay, um, or manufacturers plates. Um, and so I built a couple of them here and, um, maybe we do on the build cam. There. Yeah, yeah, that. Oh, and by the way, those that are waiting for the key for the clue for the 20th or the next key. Uh, oh, it, it, we can do we it. Haven't, we haven't shown it yet, either. but we're still waiting. <laughs> nope. Let's, we'll continue talking. Okay. Um, so I decided to, to make a main, a build plate, um, or a manufacturer's plate for the gadget cache. Um, that we're building. So this is what I came up with. Um, and it's just a, a geocache uh, or a gadget cache containment unit. Um, and then just property of Galactic Empire. And then I just had the manufactured by. So I was making those. I made one with the Republic or Jedi. Um, I made one that was reversed. So this is a, a brushed nickel or brushed chrome aluminum thing. Um, and uh, so I was making those. And I get sidetracked to start thinking of other things. And I covered up the trackable on these. And I thought, because my battle droid on my May the 4th event will be there. 
I'm going to make it trackable. So I came up with one and I want to redo it now because I want to add, I have found a lot more specs for them. Right. Um, and the trackable numbers underneath there, so you can't track it, but it's a B1 battle droid from the uh, Trade Federation. It has a trackable number on it and it says it's trackable at geocaching.com. And then one for one of the pit droids too as well. Um, yeah, that looks cool. I love so these things, things are kind of fun to make. I, I had a lot of fun making them, designing them. Um, and then, you know, I really go off the rails, and this is probably not what people logged on for, um, and thought it'd be fun to put something on the car. So I'm an Empire person. So I put, I made this and this to go on the car. My wife obviously doesn't like Empire. But uh, so I made those for the car. <clears throat> Stuff here. And what are you making those on? Are you are you cutting uh, those with the Glowforge or? Yeah, just a laser cutter. Um, and uh, so I thought it'd be kind of fun. I won't. I, I thought it'd be fun to put one here. That's a geocacher edition. So if you wanted to put something on your car that had that, um, that would be something that'd be cool to put in our shop. Tell you the truth, that geocacher edition. Yeah. Where I stopped. Uh, I wasn't gadgets. sure. Um, I made it also um, on green and white as well. That looks cool. That looks good too. Because I think that would be really cool if you say, I, like for, since this is Gadget Talk, I stop for gadgets or I break for gadget caches. Yeah. Yeah. But you know how like the Ford has the Eddie Bauer edition. Right. 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 And stuff. That's what those were for. So um, Joanne, Joanne just, wants to um, know, do you sell those? Shoot me an email. I can sell you one. That's for sure. B and J um, says, "Take my money." Jack Ash says, "You do a nice job." And, yeah. uh, Motorama says, "Love it." Yeah, it's it's fun. I actually uh, haven't posted the Geocacher edition one yet um, on Instagram or anything, just because it's a trademark logo on the side there. So uh, I don't know. I'm actually uh, going to be down at HQ next week. So I was going to take it and ask Brian about it. So <laughs> I don't know if he'd care, but it's one of those things that I don't want to make people right. mad. But I wouldn't mind. I would If I sell you one for my cost or, or whatever, a little bit for the work, then I don't I don't care if I just do a few. But anyways. Okay. So anyways, that's where my mind goes, right? When I'm sitting here and I'm like, oh, I can build this. I can make this. And then, oh, squirrel. Oh, what's this over here? Let me make this. So. Um, anyway, uh, that's where I'm at on everything right now. Um, yeah. I finished up Grogu's pod cause I have a big May the 4th event coming up. So it's going to be in a building, uh, in a big conference room and I'll have the pit droid and the battle droids and everything there and, uh, costumes, uh, for photo booths and lightsabers and stuff. Right. So, and um, signal and carbonite, which is behind you. And yes, I put it back up because it's been it's been wrapped in a in a moving blanket in my shop, and I clean my I clean my shop up so I can work in there. And so yeah. the, the actually the safest place is back up on the wall. Right, right. I thought that was is that a different one or is that the one that's still supposed no, to be? No, that's the HQ? one, and I'm supposed to be taking the end of each. Well, it's not confirmed yet on May the fourth. So, okay. but uh, we'll see. Okay. So, and for those that, once again, the clue, we're going to do it at 45 minutes into the show. Okay. So you got 10 more minutes. 45 minutes past the hour. Yep. So Sounds 10 more minutes, good. and then we'll be, and we're going to give the clue out at that point. Okay. All right. So the drawer wise, I really like the drawer. Um, and those that have not seen where we we're going with the Star Wars cast, do you have the Star Wars cast right there next to you? Uh, it's in that room. Um, Would you be able really to bring it over and we kind of talk kind of the process that we're, what we're kind of doing, which, or, sure. and when I say Absolutely. we, I mean you, um, which was kind of ha happening through this cache as you're building it. Um, because we have several new, uh, viewers tonight and I want to make sure that they understand the process that we're going through. So we're just going to kind of do like a little bit of a recap of where we're at. Um, <laughs> Pizza News says, one of these shows, I'm expecting to see a droid walking behind Chad. This droid moves. <laughs> You're going to lose again. Uh, um, Ninja. I actually have the that droid. Its head moves. And my battle droid's head, uh, which is sitting here, 
uh, this one moves as well. <laughs> so it will sit there and look at you and stuff. So uh, I'm going to have my May 4th event is my plan and have my son running them. And so when you walk in, it's going to like follow you or something, the head. Yeah. So, so uh, Seabiscuit Tribe has asked, has your event been published yet? No, because I'm waiting on a few things from HQ. Okay. And but, Tom Brotherman goes, of course it moves. Of course it does. <laughs> it's lit up right now. It's looking. But uh, I have to do a few things on animatronics in the head um, on it. But uh, I think it's pretty much, I don't know if I have it set up to go. It's still a work in progress. They need to paint it. But uh, anyways... I'm learning. <laughs> I have a different controller for it um, right. to to actually do stuff. So, anyways, it's just a pretty basic system for it. So now I do have a friend who actually made his completely the arms move and everything, and it will actually pick something up and move it. Uh, guy way smarter than me. So, anyways, the battle grid does the exact same thing um, on it, and so I have a new controller that's actually a one-handed controller um, that so should do it all. So Tom says that would be fun to put in the kids' room and scare the out of them. Yeah. Him or her. Yeah. Like, and it's, it's a, I ordered some different uh, servos that aren't so quick. Something that's a little bit, when the new controller will actually be a little bit slower too, because that thing will jump around quite a bit. Um, and it's actually bolted down to a board because it will tip over with all the movement it has. Right. Motorama says, um, Chad probably has a T-1000 Terminator run, run errors for him. So I actually almost did T-1000 head in a jar with the eyes lit up. But, uh, yeah, someday. <laughs> Chad is an ugnot. not I have spoken. <laughs> I have spoken. <laughs> Dire wolf. Oh, man. Uh, okay, so what were we doing? Sorry. So the container, I haven't really done anything to it. I've been trying to work on the puzzle. I picked up some new stuff to mount on the inside, some aluminum um, T-bar brackets and stuff like that to actually make it. Um, but here we go. We'll stick it up there on my, my little shelf. Um, so this is the container. For those that have not been with this, as we've been kind of talking about this build, this is the container that we're going to be doing. Um on this and it's we're going to have a drawer um we've talked about different um droid parts that you're gonna to have to do different things with so it's going to be basically a, a sequential um escape room in a box in some aspects of it but this is not yeah. going to be going out in the wild this is a cache that's going to be going to events so um because there would be quite a bit of maintenance and it would just end up walking away if it was out in the wild so um, you know, what's kind of funny is I just got a location for one that I could have made a permanent Star Wars, made the fourth cache out in the wild. Oh, well, so, there's still but, elements of this that you could do out there, though. Yeah. Um, but this is pretty much all you have. I made the well, bounce bounces over it. Take down my name. Oh, yeah. I mean, um, I'll take names down for a second. So just, uh, you know, Star Wars caches have to have some kind of lights on them. I always think so, containers. Right. So um, it has a light on it. One flashes, one's blue, one's white. We showed this before. Real simple um, to make. And that's really, I have on this side here, the two buttons. Boy, I almost need, you know what, let me point that down. There you go. Um, the protrusions there on the right has like that go. slant protrusion. You have the, those right there. Those yes. are actually buttons up underneath there. Yeah, so what they are are these um, parts here that are used for phone lines or data lines coming out of a wall. Um, painting them black, and I just have some arcade buttons underneath. I have two here and two on this side, and that will get you started. You'll push all four of these, and um, that should open up your drawer or the door for the decipher. Um and then go from go from there. So, you know, I got so sidetracked on this too because then I started going through my a lot of my stuff that I have. Let me see the ceiling. And I found a bunch of things here 
that I didn't know I, I completely forgot I had. And as yeah. Chad's going through his drawers, he's going to find that flux capacitor, by the way. Um, <laughs> so I made a bunch of of uh, the uh, – there we go. The Baskar. Uh, Baskar um, here. And then I made a bunch of coins as well. Um, I was thinking, what if I do a scale system? So I have a bunch of the coins um, as well. So – I was thinking if I did a scale system to where these were just in a in a big barrel or in a drawer, you had to actually have the right amount of scale or weight of them with all these things, you know, certain amount to actually open something up. That'd be kind of cool. That would be uh, cool. But, uh, and I have that actually programmed. So yeah, Romacast says those button hoods are a great idea for multi-person caches. Love it. Um, Duty asked, uh, did you ever put your screen cache out in the wild? And if you look behind Chad's head, it's actually right back there up on the wall still. Yeah. So no. So no, it, that goes to events right now. So I actually have a load cell. Um, and I bought these little weights here that actually have the different kilos on them. Um, or grams. Sorry, they're done by grams. Um, for cache that way. Um, and so I actually was thinking I can actually make that happen possibly, but again, this is, this is the problem with having so many options and doing too many things is then you start thinking about different things you can do and it sidetracks you rather than just sticking with the one right. idea. So, but, uh, anyways, just lots of different thoughts on, on ideas. Yeah. And I still like, I like, I like all those ideas. I like the scale, um, idea. I like the, um, the ones, the, those different things. I think that make add some different elements to it. I think that'd be a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. And even the one that you could put in, you have the location for now, you could actually do one of those simple, what you don't do in this one, you could do it in that and kind of bring in that whole Star Wars theme into that as well. Yeah. So, um, um, so that Star was Wolf kind of my Star Wolf says bronze, silver, and gold spin the wheel somehow. So, like a spin. In there. Inside the cache itself. <laughs> yeah. Tom Brotherman says, Chad doesn't read instruction manuals. He stares them down until he gets the information he wants. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I won't say anything about that. But uh, <laughs> anyway, um, someone mentioned about a, a projector system or, or a hot, hollow hologram. Um, this is how, I think we talked about it once. I considered putting this in and having it shine somewhere um, to play something, but I still haven't gotten to where I want to be on that. And where am I going to put it? How's it going to work exactly? So, right. Um, you know, so I thought if you get something that can spin real fast, like a, a, a fishing string or something, I have a fishing string or it would have to be black, but you could shine on it. But, uh, I don't know. There's a bunch of stuff to think about when it comes to that. Right. So Roma Cats has a question. It says, Chad, do you ever need to make a tricky cut or need to attach a part? You know, you have a way to do it, but you can't think of what it is. Yeah. I mean, I guess that you would have to give me an example, but yeah, I mean, there's, there's times um, one sec. Sorry. Here. Sorry. But I had a cold all week. So, um, but, uh, I mean, all the time, um, it happens all the time where I want to make something and then how do you make this fit together? How do you, how do you get to attach, screw it together or cut that piece? And, uh, yeah, I will just sit there and mess with it, um, uh, depend on what it is and until I can get it or figure something out, watch YouTube. I mean, YouTube's a great, yeah. uh, resource when it comes to building stuff. So. Oh yeah, there's, um, there's if if you can't find it on Google or I mean, YouTube, it's you can't find it. It depends on what the cut is. Yeah. All right. So we are 45 minutes. It's 45 minutes up at the hour, and so we said that we were going to show. This is uh, the clue number one for key number 20. So here yes. it is. 
visual audio listeners, it's colored boxes. It'll be on the Facebook page at some point. Yeah, I'll be on the Facebook page. Um, and I don't have that in here. So, uh, Peace and if you can put the Facebook page uh, listing on there um, into the chat, that would be appreciated. But clue number 20, it's boxes. The only thing I can say is when I'm looking at this. Well, don't say any, Derek. <laughs> don't say anything. I know you don't know what it is, but I don't want to give no, anything away. I don't know what it is, but I'll, I, yeah, it's just, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> I see some particular things that stick out, and I'm sure any cashier would notice those things as well. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Tom's doing these whole bunch of, like, I've heard these with Chuck Norris things, too. Cat can oh, build a cool. snowman out of rain. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Um, uh, when cool. Chad enters a room, he doesn't turn the lights on. He turns the dark off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cool. Um, so yeah, that's where I'm at. Um, I got to figure out where to go next week. I mean, May the 4th is coming up fast. It is. Um, yeah, we're, we're in April. In weeks. Yep. Um, Actually, the next time we are on will be, in fact, let me look at the calendar. Okay. Is it so um, last... Well, isn't this the one that has five Sundays? It does. So I don't know if we're on the 23rd or the 30th and the 30th would be. Right before May the fourth, so I have to find out. If, um, I don't know if we're like I said. I don't know because this because this one has five Sundays. Usually we're on the last Sunday, so I don't know if that's the case or because it's five Sundays. If we're doing something different on that one, so yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure. I was actually just gonna. John Pizza Ninja is. He's the one who tracks all that stuff and keeps us all. So alive. John, if you can let us know which one it is real quick. So send me a, he sent send me message. the schedule. Oh, did he just send it to you? No, before. So I'll have to look and see. Um, I don't remember how to get to it because I'm not very good with technology. Uh, but I anyway, just it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not very smart when it comes to that stuff. But anyway, um, I did want to mention that uh, if you have a chance, though, um, online, go on there. We have our pre-event coins for Memphis. Yes. Available. Yes. So make sure you go to our event page and order those. And right. if you're going to join or attend, go um, register, Mark, you will um, attend and buy your and buy your package. Right, and that's at cashfest.com. And I'm about to pull that page up real quick. Yeah. Um, and if you stay at our host hotel, you will get a special. We have a special uh, trackable for you that you will be getting as well. So hopefully you will stay at the host hotel to get right. The so and we are you can register it's July fifteenth, uh, twenty twenty three. That's the actual Saturday, uh, but yeah, it's in the, there. There's the packages that you have on here: the event T-shirt, path tag, one event coin, one Memphis coin, the gadget cash build kit because we're doing Gadget Academy again, VIP pass area, VIP parking pass, an RFD name badge, and liner. So, at each of the events, you'll be able to scan a your badge, and you'll be able to chance to win a special prize. Uh, sticker swag and buttons um and then you can do that as a plus one plus plus one so you get all that but you get two vip pass areas and two event t-shirts and two i uh, name badges so uh but yeah this is this is gonna be in memphis this year um we're doing shelby farm so it's cashfest.com and the gc code to log your willetin is gc 9 z e f f that's once again it's gc 9 z e f f and go check out the cash page. Um, there are a lot of side events that are already coming up. I don't have them on here yet, but we have a link on here directly to um, be able to go to the Courtyard Memphis Park at, on Park Avenue. It's where we are. It's $122 a night. I mean, that's a great price for coming out for the event. And you can just book right, click on the on the link right there, and you can book online. And then, of course, we have the Workshop Sketch Academy, Challenge Academy, and Puzzle Academy coming again this year. And they, I believe. Um, I must have taken the video down. I got there was a video about Shelby Farms right here as well. So, um, or just didn't load, but yeah. So yeah, they just kind of come back and check this out. This is uh for registration of your packages. Um, we're it's going to be very limited on. So we'll get if you want your coins and packages, get those in there. Um, because we're probably going to be doing a limited amount this year, um, just with everything going on. So 
make sure that you order your package so we know exactly how many we can do. It's going to be a lot of fun, uh, a lot of really cool events and a lot, a lot of fun. Yes, it will. Sorry, I want to interrupt you there. Um, yep. I'm I, I'm actually excited. We're going to do the first uh, Gadget Academy build off on the Friday night. Friday night. That's going to be a lot of fun. Gadget Gadget Academy build off. The great Gadget build off. Uh, that's going to be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to that. Um, that's something we've talked about for quite a while that we wanted to do, and this is just gives us that aspect of it. And we're still working on how you're going to sign up for that um, because Chad and I are not building. We're yeah. going to be there to kind of help and maybe bounce. You guys can bounce bounce ideas off of us and just kind of MC the event itself. So, uh, John mentioned here the Facebook group page is Cash Fest Memphis Vault um on facebook right. so the group right. so if you're if you're trying to find keys or just want to keep up with people finding them um that's actually pretty fun to watch people find them and post po photos and everything yeah. so uh uh join that if you can but yeah that's i'm looking forward to the the changing from that on back to the gadget build off uh i'm looking forward to it um at some point here soon we'll have signups for it we may have to limit how many people can be in it so right um because we only have so much room Right. For the builds. Um, so we'll have to see how many people sign up and what we'll have to end up doing. So when it does pop up, I'd recommend uh, signing up right away if you want to do the build. And then also I <laughs> wanted to mention. <laughs> Every set of coordinates I come up with for for key 18 requires a submarine. <laughs> it's from oh. Darren. Well, it may take you a submarine to get to it because I don't know if it's in Australia. I don't know. Or a boat. Yeah, boat or something. Yeah. Um, uh, I did want to mention that also this, I believe this next Saturday, um, Gary will be here in Seattle, actually. Uh, and he has an event going on here. So if you're local and you actually, I'll be there with him. Um, and we'll actually be finding, it'll be next to some of my, some of my good caches there. Um, and so uh, if you... Where did my thing take me? I just had the event you just, pulled up. You, gotta, you have a submarine that has to get there. Yeah. Sorry, I had it pulled up. Um, so it's on the 15th uh, <clears throat> from 11 to noon at the X in Issaquah. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I have three caches in Issaquah that we'll be finding as well. So um, right. if you have a chance to be there, um, you know, or if you're in the area, I would definitely recommend stopping by. Doug? Most definitely. He asked, if I can make it, may I volunteer to help support the soldering and assembly? Most yep. definitely for Gadget Academy. Loved having you there last year. Seabag Tribe will be there at the uh, events on the 15th. So yeah, next, it's going to be a lot of this next week, right? April 15th. Yeah, that's, yeah, tax day. Yeah, so, anyway. Um, yeah, so... so and that's about it. I thought all that I have is if there's any questions you have or any comments, um, go ahead can and ask email them. us at gadgettalkpodcast at gmail.com. Or you can send us an a instant message on or DM us on Instagram at Gadget Talk Podcast. And those, those, both of those addresses, I have the Instagram one. Chad's got the email address underneath his name. So you can always see those as we're going along. And before we go, I'm going to show it one more time. There's the clue. For key number 20, the first clue um, on there. So take a good look at it. Try and figure it up. Maybe you need a submarine. Maybe you don't. Maybe you need an airplane. Maybe you need a canoe, dive gear. I don't know. But that's where where it's at. It tells you exactly where it's at right there. You see it? You see it? You don't see it now. <laughs> so that, that's, that tells you where it's at. I hope you figured it out. I haven't. I don't know where it's at. So don't even email me. I have no clue. Oh, so, I got to bring something up. So I got an awesome surprise in the mail from Tricasius from Chad um, the other day. Um, I have actually, it's sitting in the back and I actually wanted it closer. Um, I was going to show it, but uh, uh, he sent me something from 1984. Oh, I see it up there. So it's, you sent me a picture. Uh, see, these were only out for, I think, three years, but a C3PO Kellogg's box. Is there um, actually the the cereals in there? No. Okay, no, because I was no. gonna say that's gonna be kind of. I, I was hungry, so um, <laughs> yeah, it's probably steel. But um, yes, 
he sent this to me and i really appreciate it these things are amazing uh, i mean I, I love this thing and it's going to sit in the back obviously for being a big star wars fan and just i love sci-fi in general so yeah i really appreciate him thinking about me and sending this to me um and that's great i'll have to send him something back as well so but uh Anyways, thank you very much. Um, these things are great, and, and obviously they're hard to come by because they only ran for, I think, three years or something. Right. That's really cool. That's really cool. Yeah, I was going to make a special place for it to sit that's closer, but I haven't gotten that far yet. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and Joanne says love it. So, hey, if you are watching and you haven't smashed that like bucket button, go ahead and smash it. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, go ahead and subscribe. We can get learn all things geocaching right here on the geocache talk network from gadgets to puzzles to uh, challenges. Uh, and then we just have deep dives on weird subjects that you may as a cacher. Why do we need to do this or what, what, what's going on there? So just uh, subscribe to the channel. And if you haven't become a patron, there's some extra perks on that as well. So go ahead and become a patron as little as $3 a month. So I want to thank everybody for joining us this tonight on gadget talk on the geocache talk network and we cannot wait to see you next time remember we will find out if it's either the 30th or the 23rd is the next time that we will be on here but uh we look forward to seeing you next time and remember you can always email us at gadget talk podcast at gmail.com or send us a dm on gadget talk podcast through instagram all right everybody hope you have a great week and we will see you next time good night everybody I clicked out the wrong way. Now, 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 now we're going to end. Okay. Here we go. Bye.